but it was in 1976. I was going home from a company that I managed on Timberline. I managed an oil field pipeline company west of the Mississippi, north to Alaska. I was in a company car going south on Timberline, turned at Drake, where the new cop shop is down by the railroad tracks now. Looked left, it was August, the high corn on Mr. John Ed Johnson's property who came out in the 1903 covered wagons and took all the property in eastern, southeastern Fort Collins. Now on the property, there's jails built, police places built, churches built. Well, anyway, I was on my way home from lunch. I knew the train came by every day because I knew everybody on the switch engine. I was 11 o'clock in the morning. I looked left. The Nuts. Didn't see anything in the tall corn. Looked right. Didn't see anything. Looked left. They pulled the horn right over the hood of my car. The last thing I remember was being drugged north on the, the side track right there by the, the Fort Collins Jail and P Police Department. It wasn't there then. Back then it was downtown, the police. And the last thing I remember was waking up in an ambulance heading to the hospital and it was like a different place. I got to the hospital and I remembered that when I, I was dead for 10 minutes, according to what everybody in the ambulance said, but I recall looking like down a tornado type deal, begging to live, and that I'd do things different. And whomever I talked to, whatever I talked to, <laughs> agreed and let me live since. So I may be here a while. That's the truth. God's my, my backup. He's watching my back. That's fantastic. And Thank your name you. is? Geraldo Vespucci. <laughs> <laughs> Manage a golf gas station. Well, I played football at CSU. We were the losingest team in the nation. And I darn near plunked out, so I went to a junior college over in Sterling, Colorado, 100 miles on the Pawnee grasslands. Well, there was six of us in the car, including the game warden's son, Sig Palm Jr., Paul, Bob McConnell, uh, uh, a guy by the name of Boner, and another one, six of us. And we're traveling in September, going to college over at Northeastern Junior College, get our grades up. And there's a little ghost town out in the middle of the Pawnee grasslands. And it's called Kyoto, a place where people shouldn't go, according to the Indians, Pawnee Indians. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, it's like a ghost town, like you'd see in, in gun smoke or something. So we get out, we're all like 20 years old, and full moon that night, September, six inches of snow, we break into the hotel. And we start looking at things where you check in. There was still envelopes from 1923 up in the, the little cubby holes. Well, some guy went down the hall and opened up a room and says, oh my goodness, come down here. So we all went in. There was about four of us in the building then and just looking at everything. I mean, there was horse tack hanging from the walls and I mean, all kinds, an old drum in there and made out of wood and, you know, a snare drum. Well, anyway, one of the guys outside, the building was north and south. The moon was behind us to the south, six inches of snow, September. And all of a sudden, one guy, one of the guys said, come here, you got, oh, back in the back of the hotel, there was a room that was perfectly clean. Uh, the bed was perfectly clean. Everything was perfectly clean. Somebody said, I saw somebody r running out the back way. So we all crawled out the window, we broke in. And the, the town had maybe six buildings in it, wooden sidewalks. That's, the, we were in a 56 Ford with interceptor engine, which was special that time. And then all of a sudden, he said, come over here. And we looked out the back, and going into the sun was this figure. And this figure was, we thought it was a guy, was running off to the south and there was no footprints in the snow and it was like above the snow well it turned out that a hunting partner of mine a school teacher 
study and back behind where this figure was running is a, a cemetery and there is a Kyoto place where you should not go they said that there was a princess by the name of the, the Pawnee princess and that she lived forever up there and people would spot her at certain times around Kyoto so you feel that's who you saw? There's was six of us was running? that witnessed something that didn't leave tracks in the snow. We're all hunters. We were born and raised here in Laporte. We don't need the money for bullshit. It's, it, it, there's no sense in opening your mouth unless what you have to say is true. There's not enough oxygen for lying. So, no, that's, that's it. All right. It was after my train wreck, so I got to tell the truth. <laughs> That's true. Cool. She missed shooting you. Forty caliber, yeah. Tell him what. Body Born in, well, she adopted. When they, her mom would have parties and. You want to hear about the night she shot you? Oh, well, she stopped at a bar over here. Before she, she makes straight Asian. She's very intelligent. Before she came out here, she, the, the parents didn't, her, didn't want her to come here right away, so she joined the Israeli armed forces. And she went over there for 18 months fighting for the Israeli army. And then she came back and went to CSU here and got a, her freshman year in forestry. Well, anyway, she started working at bars and started to party and having a good time. And the th second between her sophomore and her freshman and sophomore year, she started call, following the Grateful Dead. So she dropped out of school. She got into Grateful Dead drugs and all this and that. Well, she came here. I met her at bars and this and that. So anyway, Bonnie, uh, that, that bar across the street, I go in there and the bartender says, I tried to stop Bonnie going up to Tom Brady's place and she got a gun she's going up there to shoot Tom Brady's woman that's staying in the house because she beat the shit out of old man Tom Brady. And now he's drunk and pissed off, and so she's going up to buy Ted's place, the first house west of Ted's place, to shoot the gal and hit Tom. Tom's about 80 years old, old Tom Brady. Well, anyway, multi-millionaire from around. And so anyway, I drive up to Ted's, or up to Tom's place, and Tom comes down off the mountain, and there's yellow tape all around Tom's house, and a woman looking out the window, and. It was the woman that Bonnie wanted to shoot. Well, anyway, Tom said Bonnie wasn't there. So I come to the next canyon south and start riding up, to, driving up to my home and cross the bridge up to Whale Rock and start going up the hill. And all of a sudden, there's a head that looks up. Gary, stop. I need a ride. So I pull over and with a pack and some license plates off her truck and pickup, Chevy 79 pickup. And a gun in her hand, and so I was in a Chevy pickup, and I said, get in the back. I said, what happened? She said, I ran off the road and went down in the river and went downstream and hit a rock and ended up on a rock the size of your car. Got out, hit my nose, took my license plate off. A woman yelling, she's calling the cops, but all the cops were busy. So I went downstream, took a, took a nap, walked up here, and I need to go hide out, Gary. So I said, oh, okay. So anyway, I put her in the back of a pickup and I tried to hit every water bar there was and I back into my property, which is up in private property and 50 acres I own in the <coughs> South Mountains. And so I back up, open the door, put my feet on the floor, sit leaning against the seat, the doors open, then bam, bam, bam. One bullet through the bottom window, another bullet through the top window, a bullet through the back of my door, out where you open the door on the outside. I fell on the ground and pretended like I'm dead laying underneath <laughs> the pickup. Bonnie comes up, Gary, Gary, and I didn't move. She looks over me and I saw, there's a chance to grab that pistol and throw it off the cliff. <coughs> but the road was kind of on a steep cliff, so I grabbed the pistol, threw it off, took her down to my cabin, sobered her up so at two o'clock the next morning she could deliver the papers for three canyons in the mountain. I asked her later, I think, were you trying to kill oh, me? She says, I don't know, Gary, I was drunk. <laughs> That's the truth. Then he's leaving. Did you know he was here? <laughs> don't want to fuck around.
she she was a bartender in Timnath. The guys on the motorcycle club, they were always drinking at this bar. And the owner of the bar gave them all the members of the sons to drink every time they'd come in. Well, anyway, the guy with a 666 in his neck, and he worked, he was beat the shit out of everybody. His name, he's an asshole. Well, and now he's with. Anyway, he's on the back side of the bar, bartender. He gets ready to slug somebody. He grabs his arm and pulls him across the bar, and he goes down and hits his head where they store the beer. Damn near knocked out him. Went to jail. About bank the robbery. Self defense. No. Oh, self -defense. some guy started wanting to rape her, and she threw her on the floor, and she grabbed his nuts and held on to him, and the guy went down. Well, anyway, she helped take him to the hospital, went in there, the cops came in, they saw what happened, they were going to give him a ticket first, but then they found out what it was, and the cops started feeling bad for their balls, and oh, they dear. pisses you off. <laughs> she gets jealous. There's a big spider by your head. Like, literally. Well, give it! Help! <laughs> Stop dicking around! It's still there. Oh, it's a daddy long leg. They can kill you. Oh, they cannot. It was measured you for a new <laughs> shirt. Hey, Jesus there. Christ. Yeah. What are you using, my phone? No. I thought she had my phone snapping it on. The daddy long leg. Are you kidding me? It was huge. And she oh. was screaming. It's a daddy long leg.